people assume that dandyism is an art form maybe, if they're being generous, or, or a lifestyle choice or philosophy, and I think it's closer to a, a sort of, um, to a mental disorder of some kind. Um, I mean that in the best way. It's, um, it's an obsession. Will I ever bump into you in sweatpants and a t-shirt? No. I will never see, Sorry, no. Never see me. <laughs> Sorry. What is a dandy? The definition that we took for our book, which is a man obsessed with personal elegance. Everyone, you know, people have sort of preconceived notions of who a dandy or a well-dressed man would be. They think, oh, he's going to be gay, he's going to be white, he's going to be, um, you know, maybe older, wealthy, work in the fashion industry, and that just wasn't the case. Um, the men are incredibly diverse. It goes from Beau Brummel to, to Count d'Orsay, um, Baudelaire, who's a sort of dark dandy, uh, J.K. Huisman, Gabriel D'Annunzio, Oscar Wilde, Aubrey Beardsley. But the father of modern dandyism was socialite Beau Brummel of 19th century England. Dressing well was still involved powdered wigs and lots of jewels and brocaded silks and, and really flamboyant stuff. What Beau Brummel did was he um, basically slimmed everything down. He basically created what we now recognize as the suit. There are some pretty great legends yeah. about him. There's the rumor that he shined his boots with champagne. Really? Um, <laughs> he probably didn't, but he <laughs> certainly did nothing to quash that rumor. With dandies, it's their whole being. It, they couldn't exist any other way. If they were on a desert island, they'd polish their shoes with squid ink, and you know they'd use a fish bone as a tie pin. And Gates Lee's one of the men in the book, says that um, as a writer, he ostracized himself before anyone else could. There's a thread in, in dandyism about being an outsider and wanting to be the center of attention while remaining on the margins. I always kind of felt like you could, if you dressed a certain way, you could become kind of a character in your own story. Uh, and I think that's the case for a lot of um, the men that I've met, a lot of the sort of dandies I've interviewed. They get to be not necessarily someone else, but a different version of themselves. And as for how American men dress today, what do you think of the average guy on the street? How do you think well, guys first dress? first of all, fat. That's the first problem, is they don't keep in shape. You can't look good if you don't keep yourself healthy. But the average guy in the street doesn't care, and it shows. So guys, take note. Clothes don't just make the man. They make a difference, a real difference. I'm very flattered when, when other people call me a dandy. I don't go around calling myself a dandy, but I certainly understand why other people call me a dandy. I mean, I wrote the book on it, you know? <laughs> I wrote one of the books on it. I'm Gatsby.